Hi guys, Alec here with another Rev Match review, and today I'm sitting in the driver's seat of a 2014 Subaru BRZ. I'd like to give a huge thanks to my friend JC for letting me review the car. It was supposed to be a nice day today when we did the review, but that didn't turn out so well, so now it's raining, but I'm still going to do the review anyways. So when I get in the car, the very first thing that I notice are the doors. When you shut the doors, they've got a nice solid feel. They're, they're not really light and they're not too heavy, so they feel really good when you're getting in the car. The seats feel really nice in the car. They hold you in well when you're going around curves, while you're going fast. They're not the most comfortable seats, so they might not be the best if you're buying the car to go on a really long drive. But who would buy a car like this if they were, you know, traveling long distances constantly? This car actually feels amazing on back roads. I mean, it's on coilover, so it already feels good, but this is probably the most comfortable car I've driven on on a back road at higher speeds. I mean, I'm, I'm taking these curves kind of quick, but it doesn't even feel like the car wants to break loose. I don't want to push it too hard because the roads are wet. But everything about the car on back roads feels really, really nice. The car accelerates really, really nicely. I can definitely feel the torque curve between 3,000 and 4,500 RPM. But other than that, it, it does feel really nice and you gradually increase in speed. The interior feels really nice. There's, uh, there's a lot of leather when you get in the car. Everything flows really well. It's nothing super fancy, but you get a really nice feel for the car and it's a nice driver position when you're sitting in the seat. The gas mileage on the car is about 28 combined. 23 in the city and then 30 on the highway. Which is pretty good because the car does have some, some get up in, into it. In the center console, there's a 6.1 touch screen with navigation, if you get the option that includes navigation. The thing about that is, a lot of people think that the touch screen's a little hard to touch, and it doesn't like to cooperate with you, and sometimes the navigation just stops working. JC had a problem with the Bluetooth, so this is his second head unit in the car. While I'm in the driver's position, I can see the hood of the car, which I love to be honest, because I don't drive very many long nosed cars, so I, I'm not used to seeing a hood while I'm driving, but it almost gives me an extra sense of how to guide the car when I'm going down back roads and things like that. There's the torque right there. This is the first BRZ that I've driven, and I can honestly say it's the best handling car I've ever driven before. It outcompares all other cars that I've driven. And recently I've been doing a lot of driving in other people's cars. The car feels really, really weak until you get up to that 3,000 to 4,500 range, and then you feel everything just kick in. And then after that, it just feels great. So note to self, whenever you're on a back road, and you're pushing the car, always try to keep it above that range so that way you're always in good power.
car does 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds from the factory, which is a good time considering the horsepower the car makes, but the car only weighs about 2,750 pounds, so it's a lot lighter than the competition also. really easy to drive. It'd be a great car for a first learner. JC didn't know how to drive a stick until he bought the car and he drove it off the lot. The brakes feel really crisp. They've got a nice response to them. And the gas isn't really touchy, but the gas pedal does feel good. It feels like there's an aftermarket short throw shifter in the car when really it's just the stock gearbox. The car has also got a Torsen limited slip differential. So that's another thing that adds to the feel while you're on back roads. So when anybody goes to purchase this vehicle, on the bill, it would say that the car is a two plus two. So, there is a back seat to this car, but unless you're a three-year-old without legs, you're really not gonna fit in this car. It's really limited in the back space, and there's no headroom at all either. I've ridden in the back seat before, hardly, and I've probably hit my head like five times, and I might have a concussion right now from riding in the car. But the seats do fold down, and with the trunk space, you know, if you fold the seats down, then that gives you some extra room to stick things in through the trunk. flat four cylinder that makes 200 horsepower and 151 torque. That transitions to the rear wheels really nicely. The tire size all around is 215s. So the car does get really squirrely if you want it to. But that's part of the fun of having the car. JC says that on his way to work, he at least turns it sideways once or twice every day. The audio system in the car is really great. There's eight speakers that go around the whole car. And for most music, the speakers do a really, really good job. Now, the car could use a subwoofer, but that's something that you could just buy in the aftermarket if you're really interested in that extra bass. pretty stiff because it's on BC racing coilovers but like I said earlier in the video it feels really really great going around curves and I really like the stiff feel of cars because it makes me feel like I'm in control and everything's a lot more raw Subaru really went with a different route when they made the BRZ because their whole lineup of cars are all all-wheel drive and the BRZ is only real wheel drive. I think that's because they wanted the BRZ to have less of an artificial feel. And it definitely feels that it's more driver oriented than if you were to drive an STI or an Evo or any all wheel drive performance vehicle. is really good at guiding you where you want to go and the steering's not too touchy 
but there's no play in it so if you turn it where you want to go you're going to go that way the visibility is not amazing in the car you can see all four corners pretty well but there are some blind spots in the car i haven't been driving it for that long but jc said that there were a few blind spots in the back of the car so one of the things i noticed while i'm driving the car is there's a lot of road noise it's not as insulated as a lot of other cars normally are but the car is made to be a track car and it's made for car enthusiasts so you know i imagine it would be like that because like JC earlier said, he likes the way that it sounds because he likes the noise coming through and, and how raw everything feels. <clears throat> yeah. So to get in the reverse, you have to pull up on the shaft and then go next to first gear, which is really convenient since it's next to first gear and you don't have to worry about jamming your car into reverse on accident when you're driving another car. The only thing regarding reverse is I feel that there should be a backup camera. When you're in the market for a car in this price range, the competitors normally do have a backup camera. So it's weird for this car not to, and I think it should have one, but it's not that big of a deal. This is a really nice car to buy. Everything feels great. The car handles like it's on rails, literally. I mean, it, it handles like a dream. The power's a little on the low side, but that's why they have supercharger kits and turbo kits that you can buy, and plenty of people buy that. And other than that, there's a great aftermarket for the car also. The few bad things that I would say are the head unit tends to go out there's not a lot of trunk space. And the rear seats, there's not a ton of room in the rear seats either. But if you're in the market for a really nice sports car that handles fantastically and a lot higher than the competition in my opinion, then this would be a great car. And the aftermarket's really large for this car also. But thanks for watching. My name's Alec. Subscribe for more videos. And dare to be different.